Hello and welcome to Delhi Sala Digital. You're watching News Print and let's look at the updates. Let me the headlines today. Palestinian reporter Mohammed Abu Hasira from Wafa News was killed alongside 42 of his family members in an airstrike by the Israel in Gaza. According to investigations by the Committee to Protect Journalists (CPJ), as of November 7, at least 39 journalists and media workers have lost their lives in Gaza since the war between Israel and Hamas began. Recently, AFP asked Israel to investigate an airstrike that caused significant damage to its office located on the top floor of an 11-story building. AFP CEO Fabrice Fries expressed deep concern, stating that the targeting the offices of an international news agency sends a troubling message to the journalists operating under challenging conditions in Gaza. In a separate incident, Mohammed Abu Hatab, a correspondent for a Palestinian TV news channel, was killed in an Israeli airstrike in Khan Yunus in the southern Gaza Strip, along with 11 members of his family. And last month, Israel told Reuters and AFP that it could not guarantee the safety of its journalists working in the Gaza Strip. On November 8, the National Investigation Agency carried out searches in connection with cases of human trafficking in 10 different states. These searches and seizures operations are, were conducted in Assam, Tripura, West Bengal, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Haryana, Rajasthan, as well as the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry. During a raid in Jammu and Kashmir, an individual named Zafar Alam, who is a Rohingya Muslim from Myanmar, was arrested at approximately 2 a.m. according to the official statement. Another suspect is currently on the run. These raids were specifically in slum areas where immigrants from Myanmar reside and they were conducted in connection with a case involving violations of the Passports Act and human trafficking. Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivakumar announced that the state government has issued an official order reserving 24 TMCFT that is 1000 million cubic feet of Kaveri water annually to fulfill the drinking water requirements of Bengaluru and its surrounding regions. The Supreme Court had previously ruled in 2018 that Karnataka could utilize 24 TMCFT of Kaveri water for drinking purposes. This move aims to ensure an adequate supply of drinking water for Bengaluru which continues to experience population growth. The state government also raised the issue of the Meke Datu project at the 89th meeting of the Kaveri Water Management Authority, emphasizing its benefits for both Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Karnataka's government remains committed to securing the state's rightful share of Kaveri water. Protesters who conducted a silent march in solidarity with Palestine in Bengaluru's St. Mark's Road now face legal action. The Bengaluru police filed a fire against the group for unlawfully assembling and public nuisance, citing the lack of permission for the protest. According to officials, protests in the city can only be held at Freedom Park due to a high court order, and the silent march disrupted pedestrian movement. The FIR was registered under various sections of the Indian Penal Code, including unlawful assembly and disobedience to the orders by public servants. Investigations are still going on. MP Nalin Kumar Katil has confirmed that the Vande Bharat Express, which currently runs from Kasargo to Tiruvananthapuram, will soon be extended to Mangaluru. He expressed his gratitude to the union government for addressing the long standing demand to connect Bengaluru to the coast and stated that the timetable for the Mangaluru Madagao Vande Bharat Express will be released shortly. The people of the region had been urging for this extension and it seems their request has been heard, with the railway department considering an additional route between. Mangaluru and Bengaluru. The arrest of Srinath K, a computer science graduate turned thief, has led to the resolution of eight cases of laptop, mobile phone, and tablet thefts in Bengaluru's Sadarshinagar area. The police apprehended Srinath and two accomplices, Selva Kumar and Manjunath N, and recovered 133 laptops valued at rupees 75 lakh, along with 19 mobile phones and four tablets. Srinath, who had previously been arrested in 2019 for a similar case, targeted paying guest accommodations and bachelor residences near prominent colleges and companies in the city. Investigations found that the most thefts occurred during the daytime when residents were away, with the thief often gaining access to rooms using caretaker's keys. Reliance Industries Limited, owned by billionaire Mukesh Ambani, is seeking to raise up to $2.4 billion through bonds denominated in the Indian rupee. The initial offering size is set at 100 billion rupees, with the possibility of accepting an additional 100 billion rupees in subscriptions. These 10 year bonds, which have received top ratings of AAA with a stable outlook from rating agencies Chrysil and Care Edge, will be auctioned on November 9. Once completed, the transaction will mark the largest ever rupee bond sale for Reliance. 
It also represents the conglomerate's first domestic bond issuance since 2020, according to the available data. The Indian women's hockey team has achieved its highest ever world ranking, securing the sixth position worldwide. India now ranks ahead of England with a total of 2,368.83 rating points. Previously, the team held the eighth spot, but their remarkable performance, which included winning the bronze medal at the Asian Games and a gold at the Women's Asian Championship Trophy 2023, has taken the team to their best ever ranking, a feat that they last attained during the FIH Pro League in June 2022. The Netherlands maintains the top position with 3,422.40 points. NASA telescopes, Chandra X-ray Observatory and the James Webb Telescope have detected the oldest and the farthest black hole ever observed. This discovery has enabled astronomers to detect the signature of a black hole's growth in the early universe, just 470 million years after the Big Bang that occurred 13.8 billion years ago. The findings, detailed in the study published in the journal Nature Astronomy on Monday, could provide valuable insights into the origins of some of the early supermassive black holes in the universe. Well, that's it for today. For more latest news and updates, subscribe to Daily Salah Digital.